Hi everyone. Um, hope all you guys are doing well, inshallah. So welcome to our last MSA event before spring break. Um, so today will be our conversation is called a heart to heart cleaning from within. Um, we do have our speaker here, alhamdulillah, and we'll start off with a Quran recitation. Um, so Haris, if you can start that off. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الذين كفروا سواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون ختم الله على قلوبهم وعلى سمعهم وعلى أبصارهم غشاوة ولهم عذاب عظيم ومن الناس من يقول آمنا بالله وباليوم الآخر وما هم بمؤمنين يخادعون الله والذين آمنوا وما يخدعون إلا أنفسهم وما يشعرون في قلوبهم مرض فزادهم الله مرضا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسُ قَالُوا أَنُؤْمِنُ كَمَا آمَنَ السُّفَهَاءُ أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ السُّفَهَاءُ وَلَكِنْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَى شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَهْزِئُونَ Allahu yastahzi'u bihim yamudduhum fi tughyanihim ya'mahoon. Ulaika al-lazina ashtarawu al-dalalata bil-huda fama rabihat tijaratuhum wa ma kanu muhtadeen. Mathaluhum ka mathali al-ladhi istawqada naran falamma adaat ma hawlahu dhahab Allahu binurihim. ذهب الله بنورهم وتركهم في ظلمات لا يبصرون صم بكم عمي فهم لا يرجعون أو كصيب من السماء فيه ظلمات ورعد وبرق يجعلون أصابعهم في آذانهم من السواعق حضر الموت والله محيط بالكافرين يكاد البرق يخطف أبصارهم كلما أضاء لهم مشوا فيه وإذا أضم عليهم قاموا وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَذَهَبَ بِسَمْعِهِمْ وَأَبْصَارِهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ Thank you so much for that beautiful recitation. So today, tonight's event, um, tonight's speaker will be Mr. Faraz Khan. Um, so before he starts speaking, I'll just give a little short introduction. So Mr. Faraz Khan is a visual artist recognized for his calligraphy and paintings along with his community service. So currently he serves as a principal of the Muslim Center of Greater Princeton School. In the past, he served as a Muslim chaplain at Rutgers University, um, is a former faculty member of Nurli Man School, um, and through his many community outreach initiatives as a khatib and speaker over the decades. Um, Mr. Faraz Khan holds numerous ijazas in hadiths and hibs, studying under the tutelage of Sheikh Sharif al Gamal, and has studied at the Hartford Seminary. He espouses the philosophy of teaching adab with adab, which is teaching mannerisms with mannerisms, and views education as a holistic endeavor, one that is different for everyone. 
In his professional life, Mr. Faraz is a senior geologist uh, with the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, uh, where he coordinates uh, with various government offices to protect and mitigate freshwater wetlands. Uh, Mr. Faraz can be reached at his email address, which I will drop in the chat below. Um, and without further ado, the floor is all yours, Mr. Faraz. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah khair, thank you so much. It's uh, coming back home to Rutgers. It's a wonderful feeling. I, I really uh, admire and love your dedication, Arafa, Haris, Lamia, uh, Imam Kaiser, Jazakallah khair, joining us with your kids. I actually had to put two of mine in bedroom to sleep and the two others are doing homework. So divide and conquer, just keep that in mind, inshallah. <laughs> So Alhamdulillah, you know, I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, I really admire uh, the way you're conducting your usual business, right, into an unusual way. And, um, you know, th these Thursday nights are a lot of fun, uh, fun in a different way than obviously a lot of other, what other, a lot of other people think of fun. But, um, I, you know, so I, first of all, it, it's a pleasure and it's an honor for me to be with you. And I, I really am a person who doesn't want to uh, waste other people's time. I realize the, uh, the, the value of time. And so I'll try to do my best. I, you know, there's a time for preaching, which is, I, I feel, feel that's khutbatul jumwa. That's where you do the preaching. And preaching is basically, you know, you are trying to advise people. You're trying to, for them to do their best, right, in one direction. And, you know, you're trying to start... Show, show them the guidance, inshallah, and, and, and push them towards that thing that is good, inshallah. But that's a general guidance. And then what happens during the whole week is education. And, um, you know, I'm an educator. I feel like that's my job. I'm a student of knowledge that teaching people to open their mind and to engage with others, inshallah. So that's really how we shape, right? You need the education, but you also sometimes need that, that advice that, you know, that uncle or that imam, you know, is pushing you like, hey, you know, make sure you make the, make good decisions, inshallah, make uh, good judgments. So having said that, I'm going to share with you my presentation. Um, I did talk to, uh, let's see, I'm going to put a slideshow here. So we've talked about this topic as diseases of the heart. Um, or tazkia, um, or ihsan, right, or other topics, or other ways of describing this. And I would say that, alhamdulillah, you know, this is a great blessing of Allah that we have people who are concerned with these topics. Um, many people, they just ignore them, right? Um, but this is, this is obviously one of the, the things that the Prophet ﷺ, when he talked about three most important questions with Angel Jibreel, this was one of them. And so the angel Jibreel, as you know, the hadith Jibreel, uh, what is Islam, what is Iman, and then what is Ihsan? So the first two talked about the five, you know, the five pillars of Islam, and then the six articles of faith, the things that we believe in as Muslims. And then the third one was, what is Ihsan? It is to worship God as though you see him. And if you can't uh, obtain that, uh, that reality or that vision or that uh, state of mind, then for sure know that God is uh, watching over you. So that's Ihsan, and in that, in a nutshell, is what Islamic spirituality is all about. And so we want to talk about this, inshallah, tazkiyah, which is purification of the soul. And I'm going to take it from a little uh, bit of a different angle, inshallah, as, as you are here, you are in an academic environment, um, and uh, academia is something that, you know, obviously focuses you to think, to question things, and to ask questions um, before you simply conform to things around you or the opinions around you. It is for you to ask, inshallah, inquire, and gain knowledge. So in that same uh, way or methodology, I'm going to mention, does Gia, as, as it's mentioned in the Quran, does Gia, I would talk about, or purification of the soul, and I will talk about three frameworks, okay? So this will talk about, you know, I'm not going to give you preaching here where uh, all of you need to, like, drink, you know, read Surah Yasin and 
uh, drink five glasses of water and make sure you do it. And if you do it, you go to Jannah and then over there, you will have, you know, X, Y, and Z and all these other things, right? So I'm not going to do preaching. I'm, I'm going to do teaching, inshallah, and hopefully would benefit me and you. And I, I look forward to some of the questions. So uh, I will provide three frameworks um, of different uh, ulama, different scholars of Islam uh, about what is tazkiyah and how do you obtain it. And then lastly, I would mention Tazkiyah and personal development. What has happened in the West and the Muslim world is also catching up to, to that type of knowledge or information as well. Okay, so briefly, what is Tazkiyah to Nas? I don't want you to get bogged down. And this is where a lot of the scholarly debates happen, that they tend to really focus on the terminology. So at, at this point for our conversation, inshallah, I'm going to focus on what does Gia mean? Purification of the soul, um, ihsan, tasawwuf, taharatul qulub, right? Spirituality, Islamic spirituality. All of that is valid. This is, you know, you're in the same ballpark if you arrive with these. And I, I am going to interchangeably use these terminologies. Some of the other ones that also you find, tarbiya, right? Tahzib, uh, thaqafa or akhlaq. They're all uh, talking about the same thing, how to uh, nurture the uh, soul, inshallah. All right. And so where do we find this? First of all, right? We are Muslims. So always as believers, we always go back to the Quran. And what is tazkiyah? Is tazkiyah like um, an extra thing? Is it the most important thing? Is it so how, how do we know? And how do we know tazkiyah, or purification of soul from the prophetic guidance and the mission of the Prophet So in order to save time, I will read the English translation. How about that? Okay. So this way, but I will reference the Arabic inshallah. So the Prophet um, is told, uh, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first he talks about access to revelation. This is very important. And I would ask a question or two uh, with you inshallah, as we're going through this. There are three that are listed here. Okay, and it says in the meaning, and it is not for any human being that Allah should speak to him or her except by revelation. Okay, so except by revelation or from behind a partition, too, or that he sends a messenger to reveal by his permission, by Allah's permission. Three, okay, what uh, to reveal uh, by his permission what he wills. Indeed, he is the most high and wise. Question number one. How does how many ways can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak to a human? You put it in the chat. That should be easy, right? So three. And these are the ones that are mentioned here. And a lot of times when we're talking about spirituality or spiritual experience, outside of the, the Islamic or Muslim worldview, there are worldviews that talks about that, yes, you could, have, you could talk to God and God could talk to you. Um, Muslims obviously believe that the messengers and prophets, they're the ones that God speaks with. But it's not a direct you know, conversation. There is a conversation when it's talked about that God spoke with Musa as a as, you know, conversation happens, but it's not the same medium, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Musa alayhi salam, this is the three that what methods that the, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to us that he reveals or he uh, sends down what or revelation. So that's a really important point to consider inshallah in the beginning. And then the second one is again, coming back to Tazkiyah, why is it important? How does it uh, relate to revelation? Tazkiyah, uh, this is a dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam that is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah that they ask our Lord and send amongst, among them, meaning these people who are going to be in Mecca and its surrounding, uh, a messenger from themselves who will recite to them, a messenger, right? What, and what is his job and what will he do? Who will recite to them your verses, right? Teach them the book and wisdom and purify them. Indeed, you are the exalted in might and the wise. So if you... Count them literally one by one. These are the four items, right? And purification is one of the biggest thing that this messenger will perform. So does to nafs, right? Again, ihsan, right? This is, these are the, the topics of grand, grand value that 
the message of the Prophet ﷺ and the messenger who's being sent, that's his mission. And the mission is, again, to uh, purify individuals. And so he's going to recite the verses and teach them the book and wisdom. And, and there are different ways of interpreting this ayah. I'm not going to go into details, but I just want you to recognize is the is part of the Prophet's mission. This is like a major component of why, why the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was sent. The other part is Wahi revelation. He was sent because if there is no messenger, there is no message, vice versa. So you have to remember that. Um, and here again, there's another uh, ayah from the Quran, Tawbah. Uh, Take from their wealth, O Prophet, a charity by which you purify them right, and cause them increase in good and invoke or ask Allah's uh, dua or blessings upon them. Indeed, your invocations are reassurance for them and Allah is hearing and knowing. So the, the reason for this charity is to purify. So there are different acts of worship to purify our, our souls, to purify our nafs, inshallah. Uh, and I believe this is the last ayah, and, and then we're going to go into uh, a little bit more about um, how to go about this tazkiyah and what are some of the methodologies that uh, have been written about, inshallah. And no bearer of burdens will, will bear the burden of another. And if a heavily laden soul calls another to carry some of its load, nothing of it will be carried, meaning everybody will be carrying their own, you know, uh, burden even if he should be a close relative. You can only warn those who fear their Lord unseen and have established prayer. And whoever purifies himself or herself only purifies for the benefit of their soul. And to Allah is the final destination. So this is again where the tazkiyah fits in, that the reason for the salah, siyam, zakah, hajj, all of this, if you look at Islam, um, as we explained, Ihsan, if you look at, let's put like purification or tazkiyah in the center, all of Islam that you look at, right, all of it would refer to an aspect of tazkiyah, an aspect of, of uh, um, purification of your soul. So, for example, a person's belief system, they could be pure or putrid, right, based off or polluted based off of how they have, how they believe in Allah. So for example, Tawheed is, is a, a, you know, purification of the belief system, right? worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as one. Food and drink, um, why, were, why there are certain foods that are haram, right? That are not allowed. Why there are certain intoxicants and drinks that are haram. Why? Because again, purification of your mind, th thought, and soul that's dependent on what you're consuming. If you're consuming dead animals, then you will behave like dead animals, you know, like a dead person. Uh, the, the reason why uh, blood is haram is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want us to act like these wild beasts, right? That who go after and, and drink blood and, 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 and have that type of characteristics because we will develop characteristics of those individual animals. So he wanted us to be noble. Uh, again, uh, pork, right? Pig, don't act like one. And so it is shown to us, it's given, it's made clear to, to uh, you know, believers that when somebody may fall into uh, the, these characteristics that are displayed by these animals. So you don't want to be that individual who is attacking people, right? A predator of, of some sort. So that's the type of, of things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clarified to us. So this would purify the way we think, the way we consume things, and that the way we live our lives. Now, part of ritual worship, right, Salah, Siyan, right, Salah, for example, is that you have cleanliness, purification, tahara of your body, of your clothes, of the place that you pray, right? All these things have to be clean. And so, again, it provides a, a, a place where you could look at all of Islam, right? Even things like marriage. Marriage is purification, a, a methodology of, of purifying your soul. How? Because you avoid that which is haram outside of it. 
And so the, there's the reason why it's made into pure and halal and tayyib, beautiful, is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted us to look at it from the perspective of not polluting what's inside our hearts, inshallah. So again, earnings, economics, speech, conversation, why we shouldn't backbite people, why we shouldn't lie, it would have a, um, you know, Ill, Ill effect on our souls, inshallah. Now, again, relationships, wh what type of relationship, how do we treat people? All of that, again, is uh, the, the center point. The central point here is purification and making sure that we recognize this, that we do not pollute our souls because that's the one thing that we will, inshallah, on the day of judgment, take with us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right, and that's how we will arrive with our souls, you know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, inshallah, uh, will show mercy to all of us. So having mentioned tazkiyah, inshallah, tazkiyah to nafs, uh, some of the ayat, um, any questions at this point before we go into those three frameworks? You could send it in the chat and uh, Lamia could read it or Arafah or anybody else, inshallah. All right, so I'll start, and as, as they come, you could just, you know, interrupt, inshallah. Um, all right, so this is the first uh, framework that I wanted to talk about. Uh, again, the Prophet ﷺ is there. He talked about Ihsan, right? And then the 3rd century, 4th century, 5th century, right? The, these are the centuries are called, uh, you know, the, well, actually, the 2nd and 3rd centuries, you, you would find many of the muhaddithin. Right, a lot of the books of hadith, second, third, and fourth century uh, centuries, they're written down. Sahih Bukhari, Muslim, Imam Malik um, you know, Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah, uh, Dawood, right? All these, uh, you know, great ulama writing down the ha hadith. Then comes a second point where many of them, the fuqaha, they're writing like Imam Abu Hanifa. Um, Imam um, Malik, right? All these great scholars, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, they're codifying the rules and regulations and, and writing down their opinions about, you know, how uh, a person should perform their external ibadat or, uh, or mu'amalat or their uh, interactions with people, right? And so uh, during that time of third, fourth, and or actually fourth and fifth, uh, after Hijri, uh, you have uh, people who are, you know, obviously people of Tasawwuf, right? And they're called Ihsan, uh, purification, right? They're the masters who come along and start introducing and expanding on, on this science of Tazkiyah. And so one of them is and very, like, in the West, in the Western Muslim um, conversation, he's really not known that much. <clears throat> Excuse me. But... His, his work is one of the very first works, uh, inshallah, in, uh, in uh, Islamic uh, spirituality. And that's, the work is called Kash al-Mahju, like the, um, the removal of whales, right, by uh, Ali Hujwali, right? And he is somebody who's uh, buried actually in Lahore, Pakistan, and he's uh, very renowned, you know, for the, the people who, are, who live there, obviously. And so he talked about, so this is a framework that he provided. And I want you to look at it, the, the way he approached purification, okay? And he approached it from the perspective of uncovering or of the hidden or the, of the following veil, right? These are things that come between us and the spirituality or connection with God, okay? And what and so we have to learn to be able to connect with with God, right? And how do we connect? By first veil, and that is you know above everybody kind of goes through it is that ma'rifa or knowing God, right? Second veil is tawhid, which is you know understanding and having firm knowledge of uh, unity of God or understanding that God is one and and uh, we're responsible and and for our deeds. And we will be, go, you know, going back to him alone, inshallah, and uh, answering for our, our uh, answering for our um, actions that we have performed. 
The third veil is Iman or, or faith, right? That comes on uh, certain people. The fourth, Tahara. Certain people are confused about these things of purification from foulness. Fifth, and then fifth and onwards, uh, you see the five pillars, basically. Salah, Zakah, Saum, Hajj. Ninth is, uh, ninth veil is companionship with rules and principles. And tenth is definition of phrases of the Sufis and their ideas, right? So he's introducing that topic from that perspective. I wanted to just kind of briefly mention this, that how people have tried to look into how to obtain tazkiyah. And so they have explained certain topics within uh, the, the religion, inshallah. All right, so moving on real quickly. Upon, uh, this is the second uh, scholar that I want to talk about, Abu Hamid al-Ghazali. And he reached Tazkiyat to Nafs, right? He has a remarkable compendium uh, book, right? That's called Ihya Ulu um, And there's a, you could say, um, a smaller version that's called Kimi Saadat or Alchemy of Happiness. It was written in Farsi. Um, it was, you know, it's well known that two books are, this book itself is, this one has 40 books um, within it. And each, every 10 books are organized by certain topics. So first topic or first quarter that he calls, so four quarters is equal to the entire book, acts of worship, right? Al-Ibadat. And he talks about, you know, Salah, Siyam, Zakah, and all these things. And then the second one is daily norms or Al-Adat. And these are mannerisms uh, pertaining to eating, uh, marriage, uh, acquisition of property, earning a livelihood, uh, halal and haram, these are some of the things that are there. Uh, Imam al-Ghazali is, you know, about 500, he died, you know, around 505 Hijri, uh, 500 years or so after the Hijra of the Prophet Sallallahu And so he, the first two are actually on the outward mannerism. So he describes it as outward. This is what people, when they come across each other, these are the things that you see, right? So these are seen things. Now he goes a little bit deeper in the other two chapters. And by the way, I will share these slides with you. So you don't have to write it down as long as, uh, you know. Um, so the slides are going to be there, inshallah. You could, you could look at them and, and you could read from them. And I'll send it to uh, either Arafa or one of the students, inshallah. So the, 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 the first one was, the first two were the outwards. And then the, uh, the next two are the inwards, right? And that, this is what he wanted to focus on. This is what his uh, major work was. So the third quarter, right, the third thing that he talks about is muhlikat, uh, the perdition or things that will, are, are destructive to you. So as an individual, these are things that are destructive. And then he talked about al munjiyat, which are things that are things of salvation. These are the things that you should adorn yourself with. Okay? So... So things that are destructive to your, you know, or pollute your soul, these are the, and so he talks about it, the marvels of the heart, disciplining the soul, right? breaking the two desires. What are the two desires here? We'll put that in chat. Let's see if people could come up with breaking the two desires. Okay, these are the desires that we often um, confuse with. Ah, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, defects of the tongue, all right, condemnation or of rancor and envy, right, hatred and envy, uh, condemnation of the world, right, like the, don't rely too much in the world or, or don't expect too much from the world, uh, don't have long hopes about what things could be taken care of, you never know what happens next, right, condemnation of miserliness and condemnation of the love of wealth, um, condemnation of status and on ostentation, showing off, arujug, right? I think he would have like heart attack if he saw Facebook, right? Because I think that's that's what Facebook's all about, or Instagram, right? I, I just don't know why people like dance so much nowadays. Or is, is that is that like an Instagram thing? Or I'm just too old. <laughs> I've never seen anything like I'm. I'm doing a. I'm actually looking for like um, graduate schools and things like that. I was interested in, and, and I was like, you know what, let's see. And so, you know, you Google search and everything is linked. So now all the searches, all the ads that I see are ads from like different schools, you know, 
asking me to like, you know, click on this and get your MBA, click on this and get your PhD. But like every, you know, it's like everybody's dancing. I don't know why. So, but alhamdulillah. So condemnation of uh, status and ostentation, condemnation of pride and conceit, condemnation of self-delusion, right? These are the things that he talked about. And these are the things that are unseen. You cannot see ostentation. You can't. You may think that somebody is, um, yeah, you know, like a person could look at somebody and they say, hey, this is a confident person. And somebody else could look at that same person, by the way, and they could think, you know what? That guy is so arrogant. Isn't that the case? Right? You can't really judge people on what's inside their heart. So that's why we call Allah the judge. And, and, and although these are things written, it's really not for people to look at, you know, these um, sets of, of rules and say, now this person is, you know, arrogant or that person is, you know, uh, you know has other uh, defects in terms of uh, self-delusion or ostentation or conceit, right? We can't judge people by that. But what it's really serving, obviously, is to look at our own inner uh, capacity and inner ability and inner uh, self, right? And reflect on these things. Uh, are we the people who are carrying these diseases? Okay. Uh, the fourth one, inshallah, al uh, munjiyat those things that will um, give you salvation. And if you're doing these often, right, one of the two categories, whichever one is doing, you know, you're doing often, inshallah, and you're persistent, you'll either have salvation or you're going to destroy your soul and your hereafter, right? So what are some of the things that we should be doing in terms of salvation? This is, again, Imam Ghazali's uh, book, Ahya, and, and he, he puts it in a framework. So he describes them, repentance, patience, thankfulness, fear and hope, right? Uh, between the two, that you, you have fear of God's uh, you know, um, you know, questioning you on the day of judgment, and then you have hope that God will forgive and he will guide you and he will be there for you, you know, so uh, on fear and hope. On poverty and abstinence, uh, you know, avoiding zuhud, uh, avoiding things for the sake of Allah. Faith in divine unity and trust in divine providence. On love, longing for intimacy and contentment with God, right? So seeking uh, God's love and, and having the right intention, meaning sincerity, uh, and, and truth, holding uh, vigil and self-examination, meditation and others, right? So remember, and then the last ch uh, chapter of his book or last book of his within Ihya is remembrance of death and afterlife. So these are some of the things that he, obviously the Tazkiya or purification process is connected to the hereafter. And, and, and you know, Modern day, right, uh, personal development, that's the, the two things that were, because they don't come from the religious aspect, obviously. Uh, the Muslim scholars always, always considered God first, right? And there's always the hereafter connection. If you don't have that in your religion, then religion simply becomes a matter of do's and don'ts. And people become, you know, people are not robots. They, they, their soul, you know, it moves in a direction where they find God. And so, so loving God and approaching religion faith from that perspective. So that was number two, Imam uh, Ghazali's work. Uh, I simply took it from Ihya. There are many works that he has done, but this is the one most extensive one that he is uh, really beautifully organized. And um, so I, I like that path. Now, this is a third uh, framework, and this is by Sheikh Ahmed Zarru. You may have heard of him. Um, Imam Hamza Yusuf talks a lot about him in his, uh, even the book, Matharatul Qulu, Purification of the Heart, the book that he had uh, translated. He, he references um, Imam Ahmad Zarruq a lot. Um, and uh, the audio tapes that were some time ago that he had done. Um, so this is one, a particular one. This one is from Nasiha al Kafiya. Liman Khassahullah bil Afiya, Nasiha, for the uh, that is sufficient for the one that Allah has chosen, right, by Imam Ahmad Zarruq. So he gives you eight, seven things, 
right? It's a very simple uh, arrangement. Um, what are some of the things that you should be doing or sh should be watchful for, right? So he says, basically, protect your heart. And by guarding the, the avenues to your heart, you will protect your soul, all right? So protect your heart and protect your heart by guarding the avenues that lead to your heart. So what are some of the inroads to your heart? All right, so there are seven things that are mentioned. There will be a test afterwards. Um, are we giving away prizes? Rutgers t-shirts, MSA? <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll fund it. <laughs> you know, I, it's, it's what happened to the pizza and all the other stuff, I, I must ask. You know, our students are here. I, I must, like, I, I must on their behalf should ask you guys, <laughs> the board people. The pandemic took it away. Oh, no. So, well, I, at least we have the com uh, companionship, right? So, Jazakallah, thank you so much. Um, but, you know, that was, that was like the fun part, the pizza, right? Slices um, coming together. And uh, I don't know, once in a while, everybody has like these great t-shirt concepts. So, um, Maybe I'll, I'll put out like Faraz Khan Art Studio, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so, inshallah. So, so Imam uh, Ahmed Zarru, and these are three that you may want to check out. I think those are really um, uh, great scholars of Islam. And all three of them were fuqaha as well. These were um, scholars, not just like the spiritual sciences, but also great scholars in terms of, of religious understanding and knowledge. So he talks about protect your heart by guarding the avenues to your heart. And these are seven, right? So it's a very simple formula. And when Imam Zaid Shakir and Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, they had a book, a small booklet, an agenda to change our condition. And it was a very noble work, you know, an agenda to change our condition, how we could as Muslims, right, living in the West, how could, what could we do a program that will allow us to become better Muslims. And what I, what I really loved about that was it, was, it was basically, instead of like, you know, here's a book on Islam, read it, or here's a book by so-and-so, go read it. Like, how do I become better? And so it showed uh, ways, and, and that was basically the crux of it, and that was the program. The program was watch, right? Avoid all the haram, whether it's tongue. So what could be some of the haram actions that could be done with your tongue? You can put it in the chat. I'll check it out. So there's a uh, mashallah 55 participants and chat. What are some of the backbiting? Yes, great job. Backbiting, cursing, foul language, swearing, right? So amazing. That's one, right? What about think I don't talk to, right? So if you're wasting your time, then that, you know, chit chatting without any reason. I mean, you know, without something good to benefit you, inshallah. Uh, eyes, right? So there are things that could be done with that. That's haram. Ears, right? So stomach. So what is stomach? Stomach is basically eating um, or, you know, having a job or, or, or having a way of earning that is haram, right? Kasab, that's haram. So somebody taking, uh, stealing money from somebody and, and, and you know, eat, that is guarding your stomach, not having because they, it will have spiritual effects as well as effects on your heart. Uh, private parts, right? Guarding your chastity, obviously. That's a big part of, of when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just to be clear, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions things that are not, that he will not forgive, right? Or that go into that category, the things that he will not get, uh, for, uh, forgive, right? Um, the punishment is hell forever, that type of things, right? That could be there. Obviously, the, the, the scholars of Islam have explained it that, you know, if you're a believer, if you repent, right, then it, the, the punishment might be this, but you may get a little bit less than what's, you know, a big punishment. But the, there are three things that are like huge, right, that people should know. Um, one of them is shirk, associating partners with Allah, right? The other one is murder committing something that you know is, is foul thing. like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you, you know you, you have polluted everything and the third one 
in, in, in that order, right, uh, on that level, is, uh, you know, uh, zina or committing fornication, right? So that, those are the three that people should be on, uh, uh, on guard for. So when they organize, you know, the eyes, right, the, the ears, the tongue, it, they're all, all sins in Islam, basically what I'm trying to say is all sins in Islam are not the same, right? All sins are not same. So I've given you the three categories that Quran talks about. Um, like, you know, like the eating of the wealth, right? The cheating somebody is, it's a bad thing, right? Obviously, it's not a good thing. But cheating, uh, uh, you know, uh, an orphan and eating their part or their wealth is a major, major harm, right? So Allah SWT clarifies for us that don't do these things because it would destroy your hereafter. So uh, private parts, feet, meaning where you go, what places you're going to, uh, you know, what are you doing? Where are you moving about? You know, are these places you're, you're, you should be refraining from or you should be going to? And again, hands, right? Your hands, what you're earning with your hands, what you're doing, you know, are you harming, hurting people? So this was a, a framework that, um, you know, that was organized by uh, uh, Imam uh, Zaruq, and he had recognized it as the other things that you watch out for, guard against, inshallah, and you will be able to protect your heart. Okay, uh, let's see. Very good. So I see some of the chat responses. Let's go to the next one. Summary, protect your eyes, for protect your heart and the seven avenues, eyes, ears, tongue, stomach, uh, legs, uh, or, or feet and private parts and hands. So these are the things. Repentance is, we didn't really talk about past, present, and future. There's three aspects to repentance. And for a belief, so for a non-Muslim, obviously when they become Muslim, this is their beginning of their spiritual journey. For Muslims, their beginning of the spiritual journey, it starts with tawbah or repentance. So you have to make tawbah, you have to give up on those things that you were doing in the past, present, at that moment, you have to make a promise. You know, you, you should never go back to that doing that. And then in the in the future, uh, you stay true to that promise of avoiding to your best of your ability. Um, okay, so that's that's really what toga is. And that's really where all the spiritual journeys begin. Uh, ihsan, tazkiyah, whatever you want to call it. And so lastly, I have self-actualization, focus on the positives not how bad you are and grow. So a lot of the, the, the uh, we call scholar, the work that we have seen in the past, they actually work mostly about how these, the focus on negative, right? Um, the way the, the, this is working out, that the way I see it is the direction of this work, uh, especially with the personal development that's happening and some of the topics that you may have, you might be familiar with emotional intelligence mindfulness, character education, effective leadership, right? Mastery of something. These are all um, that relate with, you know, focusing on the positive rather than focusing on, you know, how many bad things you're doing, how many, you know, how much doba you should be doing. Uh, they act more about, you know, what are your strengths? What are the things that you, you know, could uh, give to the world? How could you contribute? So uh, what is your legacy? So these are some, some of the questions that I think are very important questions, and they also relate, you know, to my understanding, my, my way of looking at it. They all relate to um, uh, purification of the soul, character education, character building, but also relate with your contribution to humanity, your contribution, right? That's one thing that a lot of times in the modern world, you would find that many times there are obviously for, for for religious purpose they they would not go into realm of god right or the hereafter so that's going to be missing from these work like even um how to make friends and influence people dale carnegie right uh, uh central work the seven habits of highly effective people these are really great works that that i think everybody should be studying and, and, and understanding and, and benefiting from uh, but but there's a lot that these personal development work could could offer inshallah in terms of gaining um, in in terms of contribution and leaving a legacy. 
Uh, and both of them are obviously really good because I think the spiritual side of things from Muslim perspective, from these scholars, uh, it has a lot to show us how to have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the other things, so obviously we, we may not find that type of work. Um, from my personal uh, experience, I could tell you this. Uh, when, my, uh, when I had my first child and, um, you know, one of the brothers, he reached out to me and he said, uh, you know, I was reading a lot of books on how to raise, uh, a, you know, a child, a baby, right? And it said, you know, do this, diaper change, and if the baby's crying, make sure you, uh, you know, dry them and change the diaper, uh, make sure you put all these other things, you know, give them milk, or try this, you know. So all these things were listed, like A, B, C, and then if, you, if nothing works, go back to A, and then if, you know, try again, if nothing works, you know, rub their tummy, swaddle them, you know, all these other things were there, and I was like, oh my God. So, it was all there, mashallah. And so, you know, I, I read about like seven to 10 books at that time, and these were very thick books about how to raise a baby. And, you know, because me and my wife were alone, and we were trying to come up with the, you know, learn the best. And, and then a brother of mine, you know, a friend of ours, my brother Muhammad, actually, uh, he lives in the area. He said, you know, the only, you know, there are many things you could read and learn, but the only thing I would say to you is, you know, when you have a, a when you have a little child, you know, it just, the hajjud becomes so much easy, you know? <laughs> so, so I said, what, what do you mean by that? And, and, and he was like, yeah, it's the best time. You're going you're gonna to have children. No, you, once you, you, when you have children, obviously, when you have child with you, you're going to enjoy the Hajjit prayer because they're going to keep you up all night, baby. <laughs> you know? and, and when you're there, you're like, all right, you know what? It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I can't sleep now. I got to watch the baby. Might as well do two, two sunnah prayer, right? So that was, that was like the, the best, best advice. And I was like, you know what? I've read all these books. The best advice was not in those books, you know, how to swaddle a baby, the happiest baby on the block, you know, all, the, all these books that were written. So alhamdulillah. So, so the point is here is that don't forget that, that idea that we connect um, everything with Allah and Akhirah. That's really the biggest thing that's missing from uh, popular culture, right? Popular, uh, you know, whatever's out there, social media that usually you will not find that direction. Usually what you, the, the, the direction you will find is your contributions, your legacy, uh, your work, you know, work hard, all these things, right? Um, but, but the real thing, right, at the end, uh, it, it's, it's really the, the idea of tazkiyah, the purification of soul, is so that in the hereafter we arrive uh, with a good, you know, good grades, inshallah. So lastly, this is probably one of the last few slides, uh, Fresh 2021. This is a concept that I put together uh, a few years ago. I don't know if you've been introduced to it by any chance. I would say um, Google search ISCJ TV uh, and there's Faraz Khan, there's this thing, right? I don't know if I could put this in, uh, no, I'm, I'm on the slideshow, sorry, I'm gonna go back. Um, but you could Google search ISCJ TV Faraz Khan last, oops, sorry, previous. And you'll find this, this formula that I put together, okay? It stands for fresh, and F in fresh is for finance, R is for relationship, E is for education, S is for spirituality, and H is for health. And I, I give this as kind of like a, you know, again, framework. We've talked about frameworks of different scholars. This is a framework not just talking about the religious or spiritual side of things, but hopefully in a holistic way of looking at our lives and asking, how am I doing in terms of my finance, right? Because financial stuff will always have an effect on your spirituality. It will always also have an effect on your relationship and your health, perhaps. Um, how am I doing on, on, my, on my relationship, right? This is important. We are human. We are... Uh, social animals, right? So we need to make sure that our relationship, one, are of good nature, and two, um, that we fulfill these relationships that we have, right? The people. Um, education, what is my focus? Where am I going? What are my goals? What do I want to do? 
how am I going to contribute, right? How, what am I going to teach people? So all these are important things that we should be looking at our lives. Spirituality is one of them. That should be a concern, a major concern of our daily life, right? Am I doing my prayers? Am I doing better than yesterday? Have I, have I fulfilled my promises? What is the last work that I read or lecture that I listened to um, or last time I fast or last time I've you know, given charity or things that I've done? How can I be in a better spiritual state? How can I be a person of Ihsan? What, can, what are some of the things? What are some of my goals in life, right? Uh, and I'll give you a short, very short uh, story, hopefully, uh, on spirituality. Um, and then health, we talk about mental health, physical health. Uh, you know, am I, am I a couch potato? And am I somebody who's taking care of the gift that Allah has given me, right? It's important, right? Um, it's, it's really important that we take care of our body. It's an amana. It's, it's a trust that Allah has given us. So health is very important too. Um, so spirituality, last one, um, the, the story that I wanted to give you, inshallah, is that, uh, you, you know, th there was a person who actually had a bad habit of becoming angry very quickly. And, and, you know, many of us do find that. And so he, he went to a scholar and he asked him about it. And the scholar gave him advice. He says, uh, you'll work on it. You will have to, you know, act, you have to do things, but if you're willing to do it, 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 inshallah it would be gone and he was like really and he was like yeah don't worry about it but i'll i'll give you the description or prescription of this uh uh thing you know that you become ang angry with people for no reasons or you know you, you explode or something like that in in a, in a bad way so he basically told him that you have to have 40 days straight without becoming angry control yourself and if you become angry you will start counting your 40 you know start from day one again so like three days he wasn't angry with anybody fourth day he became day one okay and he says i want you to work on this that's the only assignment i got for you good luck and so you know this person i met this person and he was like the most calm in the collected in individual that I've ever seen. I, you know, and I, I asked him, like, how did you get to this stage? You know, like, how did you, how, you know, what happened? Like, who are you, <laughs> you know, like, who's never getting upset or angry or always smiling? And he's, he's told me this story that, you know, one of the scholars, he gave him this advice and, and he said, he did it. He did the 40 days. And I was like, mashallah, man, you're, you know, mashallah, you have, uh, you know, zeal to, to be able to do this. And he, he told me, yeah, it took me six years. It took me six years to do those 40 straight days because he kept failing. He kept trying. He kept failing. He kept trying. And then finally, he was able to do these 40, 40 days, um, you know, in uh, straight days, inshallah. All right. So I feel like I'm talking a lot. Um, there's nobody in this room. <laughs> I hope uh, um, you're having, I, you know, I like to joke with people like it's, uh, you know, it's from my bedroom to your bedroom or, you know, <laughs> kitchen or something like that. So Alhamdulillah, you're still here. So Jazakallah khair. Last, last thing, inshallah, I want to mention and tell me if I have a couple of minutes or should I stop? No, you have a couple of minutes, inshallah, go ahead. Okay, Jazakallah khair. So last thing, last word is inshallah. Um, I've given you frameworks. So different scholars that talk about different things. Um, one of the things I actually wanted to mention earlier, uh, I, 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 you know, that should have been part of disclaimer was um, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not somebody who's like starting a tarifa or like a path to like spiritual reality or something like that. I don't do spiritual shows. You know, you can't like join my channel or, or subscribe to my YouTube channel. So. You know, if you want to look at the some of the videos that are out there on on Fresh 2021 with ISCJ and with the ones that I've done at ISCJ, please take a look at it. But um, but I'm not inviting you to join my career or anything like that. Uh, the other thing is I I you know. Um, so again, yeah, if you are on a tariqa or something, I'm not asking you to join or leave or do anything like that. That's not part of what I'm trying to do. Um, I'm, again, I'm trying to just provide some frameworks for you. Um, um, again, and there's always with the MSA, there's 
Sufi and Salafi debate, and then people fit in somewhere on two sides of the spectrum, right? That's always the case. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, I, I think at this point in my life, I'm very comfortable just calling myself Muslim, alhamdulillah. And, and, and if people do, you know, choose these other identities, I think that's fine. You know, I, I know for, as a fact that, for example, I'll give you an example. There were people who, um, and again, I'm not judging anybody here, but there were people who were, you know, who joined certain type of uh, group, you know, that the Muslim uh, religious groups and, and there were, you know, same family, you would see the brothers and sisters, they, they were not religious, you know, and, and, and what you will find in that those 20, 30 years, you know, watching these people is that the people who were with some, who had some sort of religious identity, right, whether it was, you know, Ikhwan or Jamaat Sami or um, Isna Ikna or like, you know, Salafi, Sufi or Tariqa or all this other stuff, right? whatever association that they had they remained muslim and they remained committed because they had a social network that you know kind of helped them uh, remain muslim and remain strong as opposed to same family but different family member who was not part of it they, they had a rough outing when they were not with muslims you know whether it was job or some other type of relocation that happened in their life later in their life so just, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's a good thing if, to associate people. However, the, what I wanted to leave you with, choose wisely, inshallah, is whenever you're in conversation with people, uh, spirituality or religion to build relationship with God, right? It's about having a community of weak and strong people. Uh, some people who are great, you know, you have great faith. Some others struggle. Uh, some people you're familiar with, others, they're strangers in a community. There's diversity of ideas or freedom of speech, freedom of choice. You know, you select, uh, everybody, you know, does their own thing. Cult, right? That's a community. Cult, and beware of that, is monolithic culture. The leader is always right. Everyone's a copy of a leader, unfortunately. Command and control structure, right? That's not just get to nuts or... Any, anything leading to that type of spirituality. Listen and obey policy. Listen and obey, by the way, that when the Quran talks about it, that's only for God and his messenger. Listen and obey. Listen, meaning you understood the command, you obey the command. That's only for God and his, and the messenger. After him, you know, people say, well, that's in a hadith. It, if, you under, uh, if you understand any word or any... Um, text to be what that's this is what god's commanding then that's fine but that's upon you uh to obey it's not for any anybody else to uh uh you know kind of shove it down uh in your throat and say ah you gotta listen because i got this from god uh, so these are some of the things that i wanted to make sure that we understand as muslims as young muslims inshallah because a lot of times uh people come with you know all these ayat from the quran and sunnah and hadith but they're guiding you not to build a community they're guiding you to build unfortunately a cult right not you but in general uh, so i just wanted to mention that inshallah because there's a lot of damage that's done in the name of spirituality and 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 sometimes does by, by people who are charlatans right they're not people of of god so with that, Jazakumullah khair. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening. I really enjoy coming back to Rutgers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Great. Thank you, Mr. Faraz, for that wonderful talk and presentation. Um, I actually watched your finance video from the Fresh series, and mashallah, it was very beneficial. So thank you for that as well. <laughs> um, so the first question that we have is actually in the chat. So someone asked, in regards to prayer, what is the significance or reward of the Tajid prayer? Okay. Um, I thought the first one was going to be like nail polish. Like, how do I do Salah with nail polish? You know, um, you know I, I would leave it up to you. I'm, I'm not a scholar, so I'm going to just clarify that. So I, I don't, you know, the Hajjid prayer, if you perform the Hajjid prayer, it's between you and God, right? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was commanded, this is an additional prayer for you. So the Prophet was commanded and in his life, when they talk about witr prayer, he wouldn't miss the witr or the last, right, odd prayer. 
And for the reason for that was that was one of the things that were obligated on the Prophet uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we fall in the footsteps of the Prophet, but it's not an obligation to do tahajjud prayer. Uh, if you have the ability, inshallah, uh, then do so. Uh, if you find it difficult, there, and there are people, so you have to find the opening that's suitable to you, okay, and your um, environment, okay. So for some people, it's easier to do tahajjud prayer, and that, you know, they find it, it's, it's just, it comes to them naturally, right? Um, and for some others, it might be easier for them to fast, okay? And for others, it's easier for them to refrain from, like, vain talk or, you know, being angry or uh, talk, backbiting and things of that nature. So whatever, whatever you could find, you know, the focus, inshallah, that you find it's being facilitated, go for it, inshallah. Alrighty, thank you. Um, so the next couple of questions, they're relating back to your presentation. So the first one from them is, what exactly- Really bad. <laughs> you don't have to make up stuff. <laughs> So the question is asking, uh, what exactly does the 10th veil mean? And are you able to go more in depth with it? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, send, uh, say the last one again. The... Um, can you explain the 10th veil and what exactly does it mean? And can you go in more in depth with it? Okay. Uh, and, and this is the, uh, the one by Kashf al Mahju, right? By Imam Ali al Hujwari. Gonna take me like forever. <laughs> See all slides. Hold on. Uh, definition uh, definition of, of phrases and the Sufis and their ideas. Yes. Yeah, so this particular person, you know, obviously it's, it's good to know uh, the tarikh or the history and, and the setting. So what he had done, you know, obviously, as we mentioned, he, he he's buried in Lahore in Pakistan, like north. Uh, North, Northeast Pakistan. He went from Baghdad, uh, Africa, uh, Syria, Sham, um, and all these places. And in that time, they didn't, you know, they didn't have airplanes, obviously. So he's going from he toured the the the, the you know the, the civilization of that time, the modern, the old world, and he saw a lot of the learnings that he had done had a lot to do. And this is the 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 way of the, the methodology of the past people, scholars, is that they have a lot of stories. And so he uses the phrases of the Sufis and their ideas, right? Their understandings. And some of this, the, the, the discussion that they had about, you know, gaining ma'rifa with a God, right? Uh, gaining uh, access to God and, 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 you know, doing these good things. And so there he talks about spiritual exercises of, of these, these Sufis and the tariqahs that he met. And he has his own particular sheikh and teachers. And so he talks about the lives of these people that he met, basically. Thank you. Um, and the next question is asking, is recognizing Prophet Muhammad as the last prophet a part of Tazkiyya? Part of Tazkiyya? It's part of accepting his message. The Tazkiya part comes afterwards. Like, so like, for example, if you accepted him as a messenger, right? Now you, you've started basically, like you showed up in the classroom, you know, but you, that's your choice. If you wanna be in the classroom or not, you accept him as a teacher, you accept him, then yeah, then you, you're in the right place. But if you don't accept him um, and, you know, go to another class, then that's, that's fine. But that's not part of Islam, obviously. Okay, very good. Um, and before we move on to the rest of the questions from the Q&A form, um, if anyone has any questions they didn't ask in the Q&A form, you can please feel free to unmute and you can ask them right now as well. Usually the first question is, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, all right, we'll go back to the Q&A form then. Um, all right, so the next question is asking, if Allah has removed a person from your life and you value them, how should you ac accept this? And why does Allah take certain people and things out of our lives? It's all a test, my brothers and sisters. It's all a test. Uh, 
um, yeah, I, you know, I can't, the, the only thing, and you know, it happens a lot of times when people kind of look up to you, you know, uh, in your life, uh, they come to you, right? I don't have any other explanations, you know, that we're, we're all the same, in the same boat, we, we have, Allah does what he does, right? So, the, the thing that I remind people, and I'll just briefly mention it, is the story of uh, Musa and Khidr. You all know the story, right? So the boat was damaged by Khidr. Musa said, why would you do it? The child that was there was killed by Khidr. Musa said, why would you do it? The people of the town, they were really horrible people. They mistreated them. And Musa, you know, Musa said, why... Why did you build that wall for these people when, when they, they were mistreating us? And Khidr, right, who, who's an angel, I think that's the correct uh, understanding. He's not a person. At least that's how I understand it. Khidr said, I was commanded by, by Allah to do so. And this is the mercy of God. And the reason why, and then he explains what happens behind. You just have to have this trust. You have to have faith. But, but Khidr, he explains, and this, there's a reason why this beautiful story is in the Quran. The boat, it was, if it happened to be on the other side, if it gone to the other side, the, there was a bad king who would have taken the boat because he liked the entire boat to be beautiful and sound and whole. But this was damaged a little bit because these people could go back and the king's going to be like, ah, I don't need this one damaged one, Right. The, the, the wall belonged, the, the reason why we put the wall together was because it belonged to the two orphans whose father was a great person. He was a kind of Abu Masaliha. He was a very righteous person. So we erected the wall because underneath it, there is some money, right, that these people have left. And the people of the town are so bad, they would steal the money. But we erected the wall. We fixed the wall. And um, what was the, last, the other one? Um, the boat the, oh the, the the child he was about he was going to be a really horrible child to the parents and so Allah God decided to provide something better and uh, avoid that right so we don't know what's on the other side but um, we trust in, in God's judgment that's where the iman comes in that's where faith in the unseen comes in that you, you know you say you know God has his way um and I'll, I'll trust that, inshallah. All righty, thank you. Hey, Saigam, I have a question. Um, so you mentioned the seven avenues. Did you list them in any like terms of significance? Like is one more important than the other or are they equally important? Um, so I, I didn't find that in the work of Imam Ahmed Zarouf, like the way he had it. But I would, I, I think it's a, it's a really good um, idea, right? Understanding that, you know, just like how we talked about, um, uh, you know, because different things could be used for doing different haram or, or you know, rightful things. Um, but I think we should understand what are some of the, uh, you know, again, so what you, you could use your ears for certain things, but you can't really do great harm, right, with your ears, from what I gather, right, <laughs> at this point. Um, but you could do a lot, of, a lot more damage with your, with your tongue. You could do a lot more damage, you know, if you don't guard your chastity, right? So that's, that's the reason why it's, like, really in, in what we call enormity, al um, so, so I would say, yes, there is definitely uh, an understanding that, um, they're not all the same, you know, all haram, all things are not, not the same. But one also has to understand for you, for example, for your tongue, uh, people could say, yeah, you know, cheating, lying, you know, lying is haram too. But the greatest lying is to actually have, you know, to associate partners with God. Uh, shirk is the greatest lie. Uh, that's how we look at it. Um, that because the, the, the association is this, Allah always says, where did you find it? Show me a proof that God has, um, you know, a son or has a son or children. Where is the proof, like, you know, that God has a, a you know, a mate? You know, what is your proof? And that is the reason why Allah is obviously angry with, with the mushrikeen, because 
they have made, uh, it, this is the greatest lie ever. What is your proof? Where did you find it? Are there books? There are no books that says, you know, God has a, a son or child or, or do you have a messenger or a story that you could share from the people? So. Great. Great. Um, so we'll, we'll go back to the Q&A form now. So um, the next question is asking, how does one get past feeling guilty about their past sins? Um, well, could you state that again? How one? How does someone get past feeling guilty get past. about their past sins? Right. I mean, you know, I think uh, for all of us to focus, we all make mistakes. You know, I, I, you know when I want to talk about, when we talk about sins, we all make mistakes. And so that's part of learning, right? So we're going to have shortcomings. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to fail, right? And we're going to fail big times in certain, you know, uh, capacities. So it's going to happen. Obviously, we, we want to avoid it, but we want to also learn from our mistakes and move forward. Islam is not all about, you know, this whole concept of, you know, you've done something wrong and then it should like hound you or like, you know, <laughs> be on your head forever. That's not the idea. The idea of Tawbah is you recognize that you made a mistake. Now you're going to move forward, you know, doing your best not to make that mistake, right? Right. And so you move forward with that, inshallah. And once you make tawbah, you're forgiven, right? You're forgiven. Only Allah knows, right, who's forgiven or not. But you're forgiven. That's the that's the that's what we understand about tawbah. And you keep going, inshallah. Okay. Right. Um, and the next question yeah. is asking, um, what is a spiritual act that purifies someone the quickest? There's always somebody who wants a shortcut. <laughs> um, <clears throat> great question I would say you know it's it's different for different people and so that's how the prophet responded to, you know we could look at the life of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu for some people they came and he says take care of your of your of your parents because they, that person had elderly parents <clears throat> And for some people, excuse me, uh, you know, he, he said, you know, it's time for jihad and, you know, the mushrikings are attacking, go for jihad, right? That's what he told him. And for others, you know, he says, no, don't do that. Take care of this or that, right? So it all depends on your, on your, um, on your life, where you are in life. Um, you know, if you could, if you could do um, any good, inshallah, that you could think of. Uh, go ahead and, and don't wait, Sean. And the next question also has to do with <clears throat> purification. So it's asking during the process of purification, is there any way, uh, is there any way to punish yourself to discipline the nafs? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we're not into punishment. <laughs> you know, uh, back in Pakistan, they used to do that to us, you know. <laughs> so they would take out the danda, right? It's called stick. But um, again, you, you want to discipline your soul and then there are met methodologies and there are ways that are shown. Discipline is something different from, you know, obviously punishment. Uh, discipline, for example, I, I shared with you the example of 40 days, right? This person trying to fast, that would be a way of disciplining your soul. Uh, discipline would be, you know, where, um, you, you know, you kind of disappoint yourself and you say, well, I should have, I should have been up for Fajr, right? Fajr prayer. So the next time, you know, you could ask other people and install it, but you should obviously try, instead of trying to catch the Fajr last 10 or 15 minutes of your time, of the Fajr time, you try to get up earlier, half an hour before or so. Um, so, you know, you correct the mistakes in job. That's all. And the next question is asking, is it okay to seclude yourself or cut yourself away from people if you're trying to purify yourself spiritually? Um, that comes up a lot in, in Tasawwuf and people of Tasawwuf. I myself, again, I'm not a, a Sufi. Uh, I'm not a Salafi. Um, I've, I've read both accounts. I've read like the books, you know, and, and obviously uh, people of Tasawwuf have that idea of the Prophet Sallallahu secluding himself first. And so, so they would seclude themselves, you know, and, and make it as a, as a practice. So you will find that in, in the books of of Imam Ghazali and others you know, that they find. Uh, personally, this is not something what the Prophet told us to do. Uh, 
the Prophet Sallallahu he went to Ghar Hira. You know, that's what people say, right? But if you look at the, the, the known history of the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu he never secluded himself from people. Especially after revelation, there is no seclusion. Uh, I understand what, what the people of Tasawwuf are saying when they talk about, um, you know, secluding themselves and, you know, working on themselves and purifying themselves and becoming better uh, as, a, as a disciplining, you know, tool. Uh, you could do that if you want to, but, you know, don't, don't say that the Prophet commanded us to do it. And if you're looking at the Tazkiyah and the prophetic tradition, um, I just don't see it. Like, I don't know anything that the Prophet said. You know, sit in your house for 40 days, don't come out. You know, I mean, how, how would you do it if you're a Muslim? You're going to perform five daily prayers outside, right? If you're in a Muslim country or Muslim, you know, dominant, predominantly Muslim world. So, that, again, that's just my understanding. Uh, I'm a human being. I think, I live, I, I you know, try to have uh, a good understanding of what people are saying. Uh, there's a lot that's written in the books. Uh, we're in the academic world, so there are, there's always a lot of stuff that's written in the books. Sometimes you will agree with some, some of it, and sometimes you will disagree with it. You feel free to disagree with everything I said today. Um, that's okay with me. You know, it doesn't bother me. Uh, because I want you to have your own understanding and your own um, way of looking at the world and saying what makes sense to you. And at the end of the day, you make the, cho you make the, the choice or you make the judgment. Uh, you know, obviously. So, and if we make mistakes, we could we could show each other. You know, that's you were wrong, or you know, that we could we could talk about it in a in a good way, inshallah. So, my understanding again is that the Prophet never asked his uh, Sahaba to seclude themselves if they made mistakes. You know, fix yourself. You know, fix the mistake, and, and go on, live your life. Thank you. Um, and the next question is asking. Is there a formula in which it's best to show our love and appreciation for Allah? And the person goes on to say that they pray and they do their sunnah prayers as well. But uh, in addition to that, is there any way that they can show uh, their love and appreciation for Allah? Um, that's, that's, mashallah, that's a very healthy state to be in. And a lot of people do complain of that, you know. My, uh, was it? My Wi-Fi is too weak, you know. <laughs> That's a calamity, right? So, well, pe most people forget they have a roof on top and food coming to them, right? I mean, think about it. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I want to give you that perspective. So, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in, the, in his book that how Suleiman, alayhi salam, he received the, the arsh, right? The throne of the, the queen, right? In a blinking of an eye, right? Just like right away. And you have that happening to you every single day amazon shipments are coming and arriving at your door how many of us say alhamdulillah rabb rabbi awzani wa nashkuru ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayya right how many of us are saying wow god you, you just saved me you know we look at it we open it, it's like oh this is too small <laughs> i have to return it this is too small so so I think that that's a very healthy state of uh, um, mind and heart that you're in. If you're seeking Allah and gaining with Allah, anything good, inshallah. And, um, you know, I call it L2GG, right? That's a formula. Live, you ask for a formula, right? That's what I do. L2GG. You've probably seen it, right? So this is the first video. Live to give and grow, right? So if you do that, live to give. And giving is not just money. Giving is your intellect, your capacity. However, a smile is a charity, the Prophet said, right? Live to give. If you do that, you will grow. You will grow in your faith. You will grow in your trust uh, with Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will grow as a believer, inshallah. Always be giving. But in order for you to give, you have to, you have to work hard and gain you know and, and and you know you have to do that whether it's knowledge whether it's service you have to be of, of something value uh to your uh to the society inshallah righty um 
So our last two questions are, um, so last questions, or the second to last question is asking, what is the best way to practice patience? Talk to your mother. <laughs> You'll lose it before you, you gain it, right? So mom knows everything about you, right? Or dad. And um, a, lot of, a lot of people don't know this. Like they'll, they'll get like deep inside your skin, <laughs> under your skin. And so if you want to practice it, just go and try it out, you know, if it works or not. I'm only joking. So um, how to gain patience? You ask a lot for patience, right? You work on yourself. You're going to fail. Uh, but, you know, just make it a habit. So like one thing, like, so for example, today, if you're a person who, who's, and patience could be could mean a lot of things, right? Patience, in a nutshell, if you look at it, what does it mean to be patient? Patient is to do the right thing, continue to do the right thing. Doesn't matter what the world says, or you know what the affliction is. You say, "I'm going to be patient." That means I'm going to do the right thing, the thing that is required of me. I'm going to do that. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. I'm going to be patient. And, you know, what Allah wants me to do, I, I will have the right mindset. I will have the right, uh, you know, uh, thinking. I will have the right way of answering, inshallah. So that's what patience is. So stick to that, inshallah. And our last question of the day is, what is the best way to practice tawakkul? Is tawakkul something we can act towards or is it just a belief? Obviously, you, you know, something that it, it involves both actions and you're, you're, you know, you're trusting in God, right? So you, you're, it comes in as a belief, as a, as a iman item of the, of the faith. Uh, tawakkul is something that we rely on God, obviously. And uh, we put our trust and then we do things, obviously, with asbab. God has sent us in this world. Uh, so he wants us to make use of these things, but never to forget that, uh, we don't rely on the results, right? That it's in our hands. We always acknowledge that it's in the hands of God, right? So God is in control. We'll do our best. And if we fail, that's okay. Uh, you know, God is the one who's going to judge. You know, there's, so there, there's no sense of remorse at the end of the day. For, for a believer, it's not, it's not a loss of, of some sort. But having said that, there's another side of the point that I want to make sure that you understand, inshallah, as, as young Muslims, young people, people who are learning their faith and growing in their faith. And that is, um, uh, you know, what do you call, uh, um, emotional, right, Un understanding or, or uh, uh, if I get the word right, da, 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 da. Uh, so it, you know, it, it will come to me, inshallah, that, that is making sure that when you are paying attention, right, uh, to mental, mental, um, uh, you know, uh, emotions, right, all these emotions that are coming to your head, right, mental state of mind that you have, you're doing your best. And, and people who have faith, people who have trust in Allah, people who are religious, people who are good, right, some suffer uh, anxiety, they suffer stress. They do suffer all these other things. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that if you are religious or if you're a good Muslim or a great Muslim, you're not going to have that, right? Always make sure that if you're suffering some sort of these ailments, right, mental, uh, mental health-related ailments, make sure you reach out to other people, obviously your friends, or the experts or professionals who are there to help. Uh, there is no shame in saying that, that yes, people of great faith do suffer. You know, if you read Imam Bazali's uh, yeah, and his, his biography, he suffered through a lot of depression or anxiety issues that he talks about. Um, so, you know, it is part of tests and trials that come our way. It doesn't mean that we're not, tawakkal, that the tawakkal or the trust in Allah or judge, you know, that all that is lacking. It's simply Allah is trying you, Allah is testing you, but you have to do your part. You can't say, oh, I'm just going to be patient, right? The right thing to do in that, in that uh, circumstance, in those circumstances where you have some sort of um, ailment that's affecting your head, right, is to, to go to talk to your friends, talk to, you know, seek help, seek counsel, 
and, and make sure that uh, you, you know, you talk to people. Uh, and not just simply take it, I'm a religious person, this can't ha happen to me. It happens to people, we're human beings, all of us, and, and we're not safe from that. Thank you, that was our last question. So thank you for answering all of our questions and taking time out of your schedule and speaking to us, inshallah. We're looking forward to seeing you at future our future events as well. Um, and before we end it for the night, um, are there any specs that have any announcements? <clears throat> I'll go ahead. Um, salam, guys. Hope you guys are all doing well. So, Hope is actually partnering with Rutgers UMR right now, and we're holding a toiletry drive. Toiletry drive. <laughs> um, but we're going to be collecting monetary donations as well as items, and the items include soap, shampoo, deodorant, body lotion, etc. Um, we'll post it on the group chat for like the complete list. Um, but we're going to be collecting those on Saturday and Sunday from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. and Tuesday and Wednesday from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Bucklew Park, inshallah, in New Brunswick. Um, and for every $5 that you donate and every item that you donate, you get an entry to win a $100 Amazon gift card. So definitely, definitely recommend that you guys um, donate, inshallah, whether that be, you know, monetary donations or physical donations. Um, but yeah, we're going to be posting all the details in the group chats, inshallah. So, okay, yeah, shout out to Sada for putting the Venmo. But yeah. Thank you. Are there any other specs that have announcements? Okay. Um, ladders will be having a business uh, ladders talk on Tuesday, March 23rd. So that's the week we come back from spring break, inshallah. And our last announcement is MPRC is doing a survey um, that RUSA and the Rutgers administration will be using. Um, surveys about just like Muslim experience at Rutgers. Um, inshallah, we'll link that in the chat as well. And if everyone could fill that out, it'll be super useful um, for all Muslim students and Rutgers administration as well, inshallah. Alrighty, thank you so much, everyone, and have a good spring break, inshallah, and we'll see you next, not next week, the week after that, inshallah. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.